Welcome back everybody. We have got a good one for you today. So we're checking out the Speedwoofer 12S from RSL and let me tell you what, this thing is phenomenal. Before we get started, if you're into tech high fire movies, be sure to push the subscribe button for new weekly videos. While we get this subwoofer out of the box and set up, let's talk a little bit about RSL and the Speedwoofer 12S. RSL is based out of California, and I've known about them for quite a while, but this is the first time that I've ever had one of their products in my hand. Now, they make a lot of different things. Uh, they sell a range of speakers. They sell the Speedwoofer 10 and the Speedwoofer 12. They also sell a couple of different in-wall architectural speakers, right? You can pretty much build a full theater using their equipment. The star for today, though, is the Speedwoofer 12S. This is their biggest subwoofer. It's ported, but it's ported on the rear, which you don't often see. Usually you've got that port, whether it's a slot or they're, they're round, pointing forward, but this subwoofer has it ported on the back, um, and it happens to be a slot port. Starting with dimensions, this is, I think, probably on the larger size for a 12-inch sub. So it's 22 and 3 quarter inches tall, 22 and a quarter inches deep, and 18.875 inches wide. When you look at it, it seems a little awkward because when you take the grill off the front, the sub looks a little small, but you can't let that size be deceiving because this thing has got the goods where it counts. On the front of the subwoofer, you'll find the driver itself and also this interesting little display up in the top left. Now, this is a combination of volume control. So it shows the volume that the speaker is set at, and that's by a number of bars that get higher or longer as you go up in volume and lower as you go shorter. But it also shows one of the four different EQ settings. So whatever you have it set as, it will light up and display that mode. The four different modes are reference, movie, music, and boundary. I've measured these, so you'll be able to see the differences when we get to the measurement section, but in general, reference is kind of like the normal curve. Uh, movie has accentuated hump from 25 to 35-ish hertz. Music is designed to give better upper bass impact, and the boundary is kind of the let's cut off all the bass so you don't disturb anybody's settings. So for me, my favorite by far is reference, and you'll see that when we get to the measurements. To select your EQ setting, you can use a handy dandy remote, which also controls the volume, or there's a button on the rear that you can press to select different modes. Now let's talk about colors. And I think colors are important because this has a few options that you don't find on other subwoofers. Now, the sub itself comes in either black or white, and there are four different colors for grill options, black, white, and two shades of gray. And that's outstanding because you can really make this color coordinate with your environment. There's a ton of technology in the woofer itself, and I'm not gonna go through all of that. I'm throwing this up on the screen so you can pause and read all of this if you want to. The big take home items are Kevlar reinforced paper cone, anodized aluminum dust cap, and a frequency response of 16 to 200 Hertz. Moving around to the rear, we're gonna find the two main pieces. So you've got the slot port at the bottom and then the amplifier in the middle. The amplifier is a 500 watt RMS unit with 1,550 watts at peak power. We've already talked about the DSP modes and it's got all of the technology inside of that amp to do that DSP work. And it even has a USB power port on the rear as well, which is really, really cool. Now, if you look at the controls, you've got a volume knob. Beneath the volume knob is the crossover section, which is interesting, right? So you have a high pass control and a low pass control. So the low pass is what the subwoofer is going to play. And if you spin the control all the way to the left, it clicks and turns off. And then you can choose between 30 and 250 hertz. It also has a controllable high pass output. So if you're using the line outs, the RCA line outs, you can select a frequency between 30 and 250 hertz to output there. And what's really nice about this is that it really lets you integrate this subwoofer with mains in a two channel system. That's really, really awesome. Or you can turn the controls all the way to the left, turn them off, and then you use this as a standard kind of subwoofer for a home theater environment with a processor. Beneath that, you've got phase, which is zero to 180 degrees, uh, your auto power on and off, a set of left, right RCA ins, and then a set of left, right RCA outs. Now, since this does have that two channel kind of history behind it, it has speaker level inputs, left and right, high level. So you can take 
amplified input into this subwoofer and then take that amplified out and go to your speaker and grab that bass for use by the subwoofer, which is pretty cool if you're living in two channel world without any upstream DSP. I'm really excited to get my hands on another one of these and test this out in my two channel listening room. I think these would be absolutely superb there. To kick off our measurements for today, let's take a look at the four different DSP modes that this subwoofer has. So the one that I've got pulled up now is reference. And remember, all these dips, this is room related stuff. So this line is actually nice and smooth in an anechoic chamber. Um, but uh, this is the flattest of the curves and it gives you, I believe, the most bass as well. And uh, remember, we're measuring all the way down to 10 hertz here. So this is really, really low. Um, now we'll do the full compression test here in a bit. I'm just showing off the, uh, the different curves at the moment. Now, next is the movie curve. And you can see that uh, it chops off a lot of the low bass and it gives you a little bit of accentuation here around 30-ish hertz down to, I guess, 25 or so, and maybe up to 35 or so. The next is what they call boundary mode. And this just neuters the subwoofer, right? So this is I don't want to disturb anybody, so let's turn off all the bass. And then finally, we've got music. And after listening to all of these, for me, I really preferred the uh, that reference mode here in the red. Uh, and that's the one that I use to do all of the compression testing. So now let's take a look and see what this thing can do in the room. You know, the first thing I notice here at my baseline measurement is that it's really flat, right? So it gets all the way down to 16 hertz, just like it says in the documentation before it starts sliding down any, at least in room. And that's with a little bit of room gain. Um, I think uh, at the higher end, it's, you know, it, it rolls off just a little bit as well. But all in all, plus or minus three or four decibels, uh, it looks pretty, pretty solid. Um, so we'll inch this up to 35, then up to 40. And, you know, you can you notice that this down here at the bottom starts to compress a little bit or either you're getting some amplification protection, then uh, up to 41, 42 uh, and uh, then up to 43. And you can see at 43 uh, volume setting things really, you know, it, it starts getting pretty cut off there. And here's a 46 just to test. And yeah, it, it's not doing anything. So I'm going to say that this line is likely the top before the amplifier says I'm not really going to deal with anything else. So we're looking at, you know, about 102 decibels uh, at my listening position at the 28 hertz line. And that is just absolutely amazing for a 12 inch sub. Remember, this is a 12 inch subwoofer, right? Uh, it, it doesn't have any rights to be doing what it's doing here. This is pretty darn awesome. Um, you know, you, there are obviously subs that put out more output than this, but as a single 12 at the price point that this is at, it's absolutely stupendous. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen another 12 look quite this good at this price point. So, um, you know, two big thumbs up here for the frequency response on this guy that this 12 S is just amazing. I'm only gonna show one demo clip for this subwoofer and this is the opening to Blade Runner 2049. I think it speaks for itself because this thing's just freaking amazing. Now we're down to my final thoughts and I'm going to break this up into pros and cons. Now I've went over all the pros. I think, you know, the, just the performance is pro enough. Um, so I'm going to touch on the things that I did not like quite so much. The biggest drawback that I have for this subwoofer, and this is maybe a Giles thing, but I think it's probably a price point thing too, is that there is no XLR input. Maybe people that are purchasing subs at this price point typically are working with RCAs, but I'm an XLR guy. 
and I strongly prefer that type of connection, I think you're going to get the same kind of performance, right? It's not going to be a big deal, but I really do prefer to use XLRs. I would love to see those implemented, particularly for two channel use, right? Because all of my two channel stuff is XLR. I don't have anything that uses RCA, or at least I don't use the RCA plugs on it. So that would be a big thumbs up. Um, the other kind of negative here is just the size. It is on the larger side of things for a 12, but this is ported. And and I think the size is just a necessity for the design. So if you want all of those good things, you have to have this part as well. It's kind of just part and parcel to how this subwoofer functions. Overall, I, I can't give it a high enough rating. This thing is absolutely stupendous. This is what you want a subwoofer to do at the price that you want to pay for that subwoofer, right? This is kind of the everyone's dream sub, right? It's a great price, great performance, great look, great features. It's a great sub. That's really the sum total of everything. If you need a 12, you want a ported one, you should definitely look at this and put it in the running for your future purchase. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close there. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things, and I'll see you in the next video.